Hello, my name is Codemaster Jamal, and this is my first game development log. So this week I was getting into character modeling and learning about armatures when I discovered that a few videos that I was saving for later had been uh, deleted from my watch later list. There was a YouTuber by the name of Kevin K. Mac that had a tutorial I was going to use to make my multiplayer game. At first I panicked because without any existing base for my game, everything pretty much falls apart. The irony is that the hardest part about making a multiplayer game or even an MMO is actually networking. Without it, you can't really have an MMO. It's, it's just a standalone RPG game. So I began to search the internet searching for clues that will help me. Before I knew it, I was basically learning how to make an MMO from pretty much the ground up. At first, I thought that Unity would be a great game engine to use, and it still is, but as I was starting to discover that there were actually multiple solutions to making an MMO. In fact, I actually don't even have to take the Unity approach. As my original theories kind of suggested, it, it was actually better if I started building the game from the ground up in either C Sharp, C++, or even Java, especially with Java because Java actually already has sockets built into it. After a while, I decided that I was going to tackle the hardest part of making a multiplayer or MMO RPG game, which was connecting the client or player to all the other players in the game and letting all the other players in the game know that this new player, as well as any items or equipment that can be found in the game are actually there in the game. This is actually what makes MMOs uh, tough, is creating the server client system and having both of these operate and work together exclusively. I'm trying to explain this in layman terms as best as possible. So you have the client and then you have the server. It's like uh, there are two programs or two different programs running together at the same time. Whenever you actually you download an MMO, majority of the time the server becomes packaged with the game itself and it usually runs in the background of the game without you noticing so it doesn't interrupt your gameplay or your experience and that's the beauty behind MMOs is that it's actually like two programs in one so with these two programs you have the client and every time you do something in action in the game the client sends a message to the server the server validates this message and then if it has to, the server will send this message to other clients that are connected to the server. You can have a server on your computer or your console or your phone app or even your web browser. That server, when it's booted on your machine, it connects to the servers that's on other machines. So basically the idea behind it is that every time you do something on your machine your machine sends this signal to another machine so it can be validated on that machine and you've probably seen this in games as well there's something called interpolation where sometimes the game will basically guess where the other player is and it may or may not be correct so that's the basic idea it's not perfect but as for connecting multiple people in one place and giving them all the exact same yet unique experience at the same time is actually the beauty behind MMORPGs. Now, if you're new to game design or even programming, your first game should not be an MMO just because you really need to get a feel and understanding for video games first, as well as get a feel and understanding for programming. I thought game design kind of combined everything, like building an MMO combines everything because it's at that point it's like you're, you're doing so much and this is what i actually like about game design because it it can teach you so much just about uh developing in general because there's a lot of other applications that aren't game related at all that rely on servers one application that i'm quite sure all of us know about it's the uber app if you're a rider you see those cars that are kind of like waiting on the app well sometimes those cars aren't really there the, the app is given like an idea of how far a car could be uh, from you basically and that's what I was going uh, when I said sometimes the machine guesses where something is so it may or may not be there but that's the basic idea is that your writer app sends a message to the uber server the uber server validates the message and then sends that message to every other car that's within the vicinity but you see how there's two different clients each 
with both with two different programs, but then in the middle of it, there's a server that connects to both of them. And that's the way how you have to understand networking and MMORPGs is that there's two different people and it's not like a middleman that connects them in the middle between two. It can get a lot more complicated than that. And I'm quite sure there's someone out there that can probably school me in this completely. Feel free to leave a comment in the section below because we're all here to learn. That's the purpose of my channel is that I'm here to teach and learn what I know. And so hopefully it can help out someone in the future. Now, as I was saying, why you shouldn't try to make an MMO for your first game itself, because learning just the basics of game design is one thing, and then learning the basics of programming is like another, but like, in order to make a game, you need a tad bit of advanced knowledge, and if you want to make an MMO, you need a lot more advanced knowledge. But the fortunate part is that if you are like an indie MMO developer and you want to make an MMO RPG, now is your time because now technology is a lot different. There's a lot more material. There's a lot more information that's available to us now than it was for me 10 years ago. After a while, I realized that I was basically going to be doing the impossible. Here I am, I've never released a game before, and I'm trying to make an MMO of all things. If you search on the internet, most people are going to tell you that, hey, look, making an MMO is impossible. But in today's time, in today's modern market and technologies, that there's actually so many solutions to making an MMO. The only hard part is when you're actually doing it by yourself. Usually MMOs have a team of eight to 250,000 people in order to develop a game. And sometimes even with that many people, the game still doesn't work. You could still fail even with a team of 250,000 people. I'm just one person. So is it possible for one person to make an MMO by himself? Take on the impossible. If you are interested in making an MMO as an indie developer, there are a lot of solutions. My first solution I would give to you is to learn Java. The reason why I say this is because Java has built in sockets and if you do enough research on sockets, you'll understand how to build a server with relative ease. And with Java, if you combine it with lightweight Java game library, it's come on, it's like, it's like just handing it to you. Yes, it's gonna be a little hard at first, but once you get the hang of it, it should be a lot easier. The next option I'll give you is to learn C++ and try out Unreal Engine. When it comes to a lot of pre-made game engines, I'm learning that you're pretty much gonna to have to kind of rewrite the engine itself in order to fit your game's needs. So if you are interested in making an MMO with Unity or Unreal Engine or even Godot, you might have to re rewrite a few things just to make your game work the way how you want to. Sorry for the pronunciation of this name, but there's also a YouTuber by the name of Pantelis Adrianakis. He has an MMO project by the name of Epic Dragon World, and he's actually released his game's source material as like for free, basically. And you can download and basically you can do your research on your own and figure out how his game works. It's not entirely a walk in the park, but you do have to learn a bit more. And that's really what it's about, it's educating yourself to the point where you have a clear understanding of what you need to do in order to get it done. Once you look back, it'll prob you'll probably think that hey, this is relatively easy compared to where I started off at. Up until Unity 2019, we could have used the built-in Unity networking software in order to build multiplayer games. Now, that thing's been taken apart. It's been deprecated. And at first, when they said that it was gonna be deprecated, I thought that maybe they might do something similar to what PHP did when it came to the MySQL function, where they updated the MySQL function to the MySQL I function. It still did the same thing, but it was improved. Hence what the I stands for. But uh, nope. That's not what Unity did. When they said it was deprecated, it's gone. Not even there anymore. It's just completely gone. What they were trying to do, it, it just wasn't meeting consumer demand. That's why it had to be taken out. Now, this is pretty much why I was having a dilemma was that I started out with the idea of making an MMO and had all these different solutions planned out, but I was losing them. So the spatial OS system is gone, Unity Network is gone, and basically my dream was starting to fall apart and I was starting to lose it. I couldn't think straight, I couldn't eat properly, I've been eating nothing but junk food for like the past month and that's bad. I had to do something about it. So I dug deep and I, I was looking for every solution that was possible and I actually found a lot of solutions that were available to me even without spatial OS and Unity networking. I was actually surprised at how many solutions were actually available to me. 
it was then that it occurred to me that I could actually use my channel to help other indie MMO developers or people that want to develop MMOs on their own to help them develop their games. If you're interested in developing indie MMOs, please subscribe and message me. Like, honestly, talk to me. Like, I, I, I pretty much respond to everybody's message. I really don't have too many people that I block or ignore unless I know them in real life and they just call me too damn much. Anyhow, as I found solutions to my MMO problem, I found the solution in Dark Rift Networking 2. And with Dark Rift, it's like finding a library in Java and just like falling in love with it. And that's basically the experience that I've had with it. It is free on the Unity Asset Store. The documentation might be a little hard to understand, which is why I plan on making a Dark Rift 2 networking tutorial, at least so you can learn how to put together the game that they have in the tutorial, or if you're having a hard time putting that game together i'll teach you and we'll go through the entire process together dark roof which is something I, I fell in love with this is the reason why i want to get the pro version just so that i can show my appreciation for it and it, the best part is that it works perfectly fine with unity 2019 it's like there aren't any issues with it being compatible with unity 2019 it works completely fine but basically with dark roof what you can do is build your own plugins but if you need a player manager or an item manager or in my case a monster manager or whatever essentials that your game needs you can actually build plugins for your game dark roof will actually manage these plugins and you can even start the server itself from your unity game client but once you understand and get a grasp of it it works pretty well Just remember, if you're passionate about game development and making games, just stick to your dream and no matter what, just never stay off course. Only you can build your dream world and only you know how your dream world is supposed to be built. So keep at it and until next time, I'll see you guys again. This is Codemaster Jamal. Peace out. Ow.